pretty pale from the sun, but that's okay. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm kind of just, well, for the next couple of days because I don't think I'm going to finish this book in one day. I actually started it yesterday. I'm going to be bringing you along with me while I read The Thief of Always by Clive Barker. I kind of thought I put this in my fall book haul. This was like a surprise read. I didn't pick it. I did like a blind blind date book, but I thought it would be fun to chronicle it because it feels kind of yeah. Halloween-y. It actually is illustrated as well with a lot of drawings by the author, which I'm enjoying a lot so far. I'm not super far into the book, but basically what we know of this book so far is the main character is a boy named Harvey Swick and he's really down in the dumps. He's having like the February down in the dumps or something like that. He keeps talking about like February being such a gray time and this this like fairy guy named ruckus or rickus or something comes in the middle of the night and is like do you want to come up to the holiday house and he's like yeah sure <laughs> and like goes with this guy who like flies him to this holiday house where he shows up and there are other children and it's like this really big house it's a ways away there are other children we don't know a lot about it yet. Basically he gets there and he's so exhausted from traveling he just like eats a bunch of this really delicious food and goes to sleep. But the woman who made him the food, who I think kind of takes care of the house and the other children in it, he's met two other children so far and she is, gosh I forget her name, darn it I forgot what her name was, but she's super old and is being a little bit cagey about the guy who is in charge, the guy who like built and owns the house. So that's where we're at right now. There's definitely a bunch of little kind of red flags, if you will, a couple sus little things. One being obviously this guy who runs the house being kind of cagey and possibly because Harvey asked to meet him and she was like, I'm not so sure that'll happen. So I thought that was weird. But so far, it's definitely setting a tone. It's kind of young adult type thing not quite young adult but it feels like a book for older children like maybe a 12 year old or something <laughs> it's pretty good so far definitely setting a tone setting a mood it feels to me also pretty classic so I really like that <laughs> I will update you once I've read a little bit more and have dug into the story a little bit more but so far it's definitely pretty interesting and I like the illustrations and the tone. <laughs> It was a dreary day. It's not that dreary now, but it was kind of rainy and dreary earlier. So I got some nice reading done. And basically, not a ton more has happened, but basically, oh, what's the kid's name? Harvey. Harvey is at the holiday house and he wakes up like the next morning after sleeping a bunch his first night there. And in the morning it is springtime, which it wasn't when he arrived. It was like cold and rainy when he arrived in like February. And then it's really interesting because it's got like a different climate in this little house's area. Hi Nugget. Oh my god, you're so cute. The seasons are different. There's like a different climate in this holiday house area. And it starts off as spring in the morning, becomes summer, by like the evening, late afternoon, it's fall and they celebrate Halloween every day here. And then at by nighttime it is winter and and they celebrate Christmas. So it's got this really interesting, like, I don't know, we don't know why the seasons are like this. They're just like, oh, it's magic, and that's acceptable enough, but Harvey has a lot of questions, understandably so. The other kid there, Winston or whatever his name is, Watson, Winston, I don't know what his name is, but that kid just basically is always like, who cares? Like, who cares why it happens? And Harvey's like, I kind of am wondering. And then there's another little girl there, and she is like has been there the longest of anybody and is kind of over it and so I think we're gonna learn a little bit more about yeah I just think we're gonna learn a little bit more about like what happens if you're there for a long time and my suspicion is that these kids cannot leave the house once they're there 
so I think that's gonna be confirmed at some point but that's just my suspicion right now I do also enjoy the illustrations I think they're cool although I will say I actually have a really nice vivid pictures in my head when I'm reading this book so yeah I'm definitely enjoying the reading and the writing and the story a lot more than I thought I would and I'm excited to see where it goes that's all I will update when more happens to give another reading update I read some more last night yeah basically I called it with the house I was like I'm pretty sure they're gonna not be able to leave this house and I was right about that the old woman mrs. whatever her name was was like yeah like you Harvey and Wendell are basically trapped here like I've been trapped here for forever and so it was revealed that they can't leave the house but they did end up escaping through the like fog wall the old woman used her cat to help them escape because it's really good with direction and they managed to get through the fog but one of the flying creatures like Rictus Rickus or whatever his name is one of those creatures but the really scary one was coming after them but when the creature got through the fog mist wall it like disintegrated or like started like not being able to survive outside of the holiday house so they're like oh okay like stuff doesn't survive outside of here because he looked at the toy that he brought with him in his pocket and it like turned to dust so anyway Wendell and Harvey like set back to the center of town to get back to their families Harvey gets back to his mom and dad's house he's noticing that things look a lot different than they did when he left even though it was only like a month ago and he knocks on his parents door and this old man answers and then he realizes that it's his parents and they're really old and actually 31 years has gone by in the outside world and the thing with the seasons like during the day how it starts off as spring and then goes to summer autumn and then winter basically each day that he's in the holiday house was a year in the outside world the regular world and those were actually like the seasons that were passing so instead of it being just over a month it's been 31 years so he's like obviously really upset and his parents are also like oh my gosh what happened like you didn't age so he's trying to like help his parents find the house they're trying to like talk to the police about it and then Harvey just realizes he needs to go he needs to go back there to see if he can like regain the time he lost with his family so that's where I just stopped is that they we're just going back there and it's really nerve-wracking because they know the power that the house holds and like literally the second they got back there Wendell immediately like fell under its spell again <laughs> Harry's like this is gonna be a struggle so I'm really excited to see what happens next my baby's gonna nap so I'm gonna read a bunch more now I might even read to the end I don't know because it's not that long of a book. So I may end up finishing it today. I'll keep you posted, stay tuned. This is my last reading update because as I suspected, I finished the book last night and wow, what kind of a roller coaster of an ending. So I think I left off basically where Harvey and Winston, I keep forgetting his name, but I'm pretty sure it's Winston. <laughs> basically when you thought he was defeated he wasn't like completely defeated and then he kind of like came back for a second and then was fully defeated all of the children's souls got freed and they got to go back and live their lost time with their parents so it's a really happy ending really good book in general i loved the story i think it's got very much like modern fairy tale parable vibes and i just loved the way it was written loved how the description was it was descriptive not too wordy yeah like i said a great book i would say ages like 10 to maybe even like 14 would be probably the ideal demographic for this but that being said it's definitely still very enjoyable as an adult i think i'll end up reading more by this author in the future because this was just really really well done to be honest I don't have like a lot more to say on it because it's pretty straightforward kind of like children's type book <laughs> I think I don't really have a lot more to say on this so I think that's gonna be it for this reading vlog kind of just wanted to read and see. <laughs>
Oh, thank you. <laughs> Um, kind of just wanted to read and do something Halloween-y. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. I promise it won't be another reading vlog. I don't know what it'll be, but it won't be another reading vlog. Like, subscribe. I will see you later. Let me know in the comments if you think the reading vlogs are cool or stupid. Bye.